Welcome back to this week's edition of the Vincent Voice. I'm Scott Whittington, and I'm here with Rhonda Ipoch. Now, Rhonda, Hello. we're going to talk to her today. How long have you been at the VA? Oh, I've been here over 15 years total. 15 years. Mm -hmm. And where are you working right now? I'm with Voluntary Services. Voluntary Services. That is a position I feel like I've trained for my entire life. Oh, what's that? Because I volunteer for everything, and if I don't volunteer, somebody else volunteers me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that feels. All right, so we got some events coming up. So yes. So what's coming up? Well, of course, Memorial Day. Uh, our Sunday. Yeah, well, Monday is Memorial Day, but this True. year we're the doing our program yeah. on Sunday at 2. Sunday at now, 2 o'clock? Now, we do have a couple of special things for that program. Okay. Uh, this is our bulletin. But we have some keepsakes that we're going to have on a table. All right. We also have a surprise, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. It is a special release ceremony. We've been working on this for a few weeks. A few things didn't work out exactly like we planned, but there's always a plan B. Hey, that's the way it always works out. Okay, so this is going to be Sunday, 2 o'clock in right the auditorium here. right here at the Carl Vinson VA. Correct. And it's open to anyone who wants to come. Everyone. So, yeah, please, if you have time on Sunday at 2 o'clock, please come out to the Carl Vinson VA and, and come to the auditorium to see this wonderful uh, ceremony. I know we've got a couple of guest speakers uh, that are going to oh, yes. talk. And, and we have the color guard from uh, Warner Robins Air Force Base as awesome. well as one of their speakers. Their speaker is, uh, our keynote speaker is Colonel... Lyle K. Drew. I've actually mm -hmm. seen him before, and he was wonderful. It's not his first trip to the VA. But we also have a special guest speaker. That's going to be Congressman Rick W. Allen. Yeah. And he is with U.S. House of Representatives, uh, 12th District. 12th District. Well, we hope to... We hope that you'll come out and take some time to, to hear what uh, was going to happen at Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, what else you got there? You got some note cards? I do. We actually have just started our summer youth volunteer program. Mm. Uh, this is where the high schoolers are allowed to come into the VA. Uh, we're not going to be doing any fingerprints and background check like we do with regular volunteers, but they go through my service, which is volunteer services. Our telephone number is 478-277-2729. My name is Rhonda Ipock, and I'll be happy to help you with that application. Uh, it's for the students between the ages of 16 and 18 Okay. for this uh, youth program. Now, there is a few points I want to tell you. All right. Well, good. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the ages of 16 to 18 of age. Uh, for the entire summer, which is June through August 3rd, I'm sorry, June 4th mm -hmm. through August 3rd, you would be volunteering a total of 50 hours. Now, that may sound like a lot of summer time, but it really is, and I did a breakdown. That would only be about four hours a week. Well, that's not too bad. And they're giving back to the community and the veterans here. Right. And all that's, that's required is just an application, a parental consent, and most important, your report card. Very well. All right. So we want at least a C average. Uh, now, we also have... Um, and what kind of things are they going to be doing in the volunteer? Oh, we have several. Because I don't want them thinking we're going to be breaking rocks yeah, or we have them do anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. But we do have uh, several service lines that are already requesting our uh, youth volunteers, and they're very excited about this, where we have our extended care. Mm -hmm. uh, the nurse asked me the other day, she says, send me all you can get. Well, right now we're in need of those volunteers, so I'm hoping to hear from more folks. All right. What was that number again? 478-277-2729. It also has a answering message there, so leave a message if no one is there in the office. Okay. So 16 to 18 year olds with a C average, come out and volunteer this summer. We'd love to have you. That, that is, that's a huge important deal and the veterans love to see you guys. So make sure that you, uh, if you want to, to come out. What else now let's talk about volunteer services. Volunteer services. What's okay. going on? Well, uh, you had asked me earlier about items that we need. Yes, donations. And it has really come to my attention that although we have a lot of clothing mm -hmm. uh, for the homeless veterans, for the veterans here going through the different programs, 
a lot of that clothing is outdated. Mm. Now, I myself, I will go through my closet. I will go through. I will get rid of things that I no longer wear. Something I'm really asking for now, more updated clothing. Great to clean out your closet. Great to get rid of stuff. But when it comes to our veterans, let's be mindful. Uh, they do live in 2018. And let's try to yep. keep a little more updated clothing for them. Absolutely. And I was also thinking that uh, if we could get some clothing for interviews. Uh, I know a lot of these veterans that are going out for job interviews, they, not, they don't have just a nice suit jacket or a, a shirt and tie. So if you have any of that that's in excess uh, and you want to give back to the veterans and give back to the community, we're definitely collecting those. Right. Now, where could they bring that? Oh, that would also come to voluntary services. If you don't know where we're located, we're in the basement. Our building number is number 16, and you can call the same number I gave, 272-27, I'm sorry, 277-2729. Oh, very well. Okay. Now, you, is there anything else that we want to talk about at Volunteer Services? Uh, let's see. We've always got stuff going on. I will tell you that recently we just had a health fair. We had over mm -hmm. 375 employees and veterans to attend the health fair. Uh, had Nurses Week. That was a wonderful th uh, presentation that the nurses did. There's always something going on, so we do need volunteers. All right. You heard it right here. So if you want to come out and volunteer, but you don't have to be 16 to 18, right? We'll take volunteers. Absolutely. We so. do have a regular volunteer program. Uh, many of our volunteers are actually spouses of the veterans that live right here. So anyone is acceptable. We will be doing a fingerprinting and background check on those volunteers for the summer program. Mm -hmm. Again, we do not do any of that. Your report card is very important. Rhonda, I, I appreciate your time today. My pleasure. Thank you for coming out to talk to us. And uh, we'll be back with more Vincent Voice. Gaywood Company is a proud sponsor of Trinity Christian School. Congratulations to the Crusaders from Gaywood Company in Dublin, Jeffersonville, Toonsboro, McRae, and Eastman. Call 478-933-5321. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson. We've been serving the Dublin Lawrence community for over 90 years here at Williamson's Bakery. We specialize in donuts, cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies, birthday cakes. They're our business, not a hobby. And don't forget our large selection of cheese straws. For special orders, contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or better yet, just come get you some. When you stop by, be sure to try our all new Pig in the Blankets. We have bacon, sausage, and chicken. We're located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, Dublin, Georgia. With the hot, freshest donuts, come to Williamson's Bakery. We proudly support our area athletics. Welcome back to the Vincent Voice. I'm Scott Winnington, and I'm here with April Veal. And we're going to talk about Memorial Day. Memorial Day is coming up this Monday. And so I basically I wanted to know, first off, what branch of service did you serve in and how long were you in there? Uh, I served in the U.S. Army. Uh, I retired in April of 2013, and uh, that's 12 years. You did 12 years? Wow. Yes, All right. What was your job? Uh, I was a chemical specialist uh, oper operator. Very well. Any interesting bases did you go to? Uh, I did uh, four years in Korea. Four years in Korea. Oh, wow. Okay. So as a veteran, an American going to a foreign country, what was it like to... What was it like basically to, to live and work in Korea for four years? Um, it was an amazing experience, uh, getting to experience just another culture. Mm -hmm. um, the people over there were amazingly nice and grateful that we were there. Very well. Um, and I, we traveled, you know, on R&R &R all over, and uh, we met some really interesting people. Um, they're just amazing, the country itself. Favorite town, favorite food. What's your favorite Korean food? we got to know that. I would say kimchi. Kimchi, okay. It's a pickled cabbage. Pick, yep, yep. I've had it many times. Okay, so Memorial Day is coming up, like we said on Monday. What does that mean to you? What does Memorial Day mean to you? Um, I, I th it's a day that you know we remember, you know, the amazing men and women that you know gave the ultimate sacrifice. Very well. All those that came before us is the reason we're here today. Yes, sir. And. Uh, did you, uh, did you have a lot of family that served behind you? Uh, my brother uh, is a Marine. I, okay, I am too. <laughs> All right. Um, and so do you, um, was there a, I saw, okay, so he's a Marine and you're in the Army. Was, how, what was that 
sibling rivalry like? Yes, yeah, sir. We're always competitive on trying to see which branch of the military is better. Oh, we are. Yeah, of course, the Marine Corps, right? And he always informs me they're first in. <laughs> oh, yeah, he said you yeah. can follow me. Very well. Okay, so uh, here at the facility, there's uh, we have a lot of things going on. I mean, I'm sure you like to participate in everything that we got coming up. And as a reminder, this Sunday we have the Memorial Day ceremony in here at two o'clock. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you there. Um, is, is there any kind of what would you want to say to the people that are watching about what it's like to serve? Um, it's an amazing experience. You know, I don't think there's any greater service to your country than volunteering to serve in the military. And I'm always amazed by the different people I've met here, soldiers, Marines, sailors. We just, we all have one thing in common, you know, we volunteer, you know, and we're willing to, you know, sacrifice anything for our country. And I think there's just no greater service than that. That sounds good to me. I, uh, I appreciate your time uh, for coming out and, and, and talking to us here at the Distant Voice. So thank you. Thank you. We're here today talking with veterans about Memorial Day and what it means to them. I'm here with Terry Rogers Meeks. Yes. And uh, what service were you in? I actually served in the Air Force as well as the Army. Air Force and Army? Yes, sir. Okay, so which one's better? Who would win in a knockdown uh, royal fight? Well, actually, the Army gave birth to the Air Force. And <laughs> I don't prefer one over the other. Oh, good answer, good answer. I, I mean, the mission is different, and I actually enjoyed um, being a part of both services. I feel uh, very fortunate. Oh, yeah. to have been able to, you know, work with the greatest Air Force in the world as well as the greatest ground force in the world. Very well. And how many years did you do total? I did 20 years of service. Wow. And right now my husband, actually, James uh, Wesley Meeks, is in the process of retiring after 21 years. So we're a military family. Military family. Yes, sir. That's the way to go. Anyone before you join? Um, Family-wise, parents, brother, sister? Actually, I was the first, and then first one. three of my, or two of my younger brothers uh, followed suit. I followed suit. That, that's just like yes. my family. My father and brother are both Marine. Uh, yeah, so that's the, hey, uh, that's the way that uh, we carry on the tradition of the yes. military as his family. Definitely. So what does, with Memorial Day coming up, what does Memorial mean? Memorial Day mean to you? To me, Memorial Day is, is it's more like... Um, when we do a moment of silence that so that we can um, think and reflect on to honor those who um, have done what many of us, you know, can't even experience. I myself served in the Gulf War as well as um, Operation Enduring, Free Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. And I lost um, some, some buddies. And, you know, Memorial Day is that day that we set aside and, and we all have, have an, an actual day of silence that, you know, we may be able to just think about um, what they meant to us, what they meant to this country, um, knowing that only 1% of the entire population mm -hmm. of the United States of America, you know, have actually, you know, raised their hands and, you know, sworn to protect and defend, you know, the Constitution of the United States of America. And, you know, every time I hear the Star Spangled Banner, I literally get chills um, because, you know, the pride that comes with, again, being a part of, you know, you know, the greatest military, you know, in the entire world. And, you know, to be a part of something bigger than yourself and to know that um, along the way, you know, you, you formed um, friendships um, oh, yeah. with so many different people um, in, in your military service. And, you know, it's something that, that I take pride in more than anything else, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about with that bond and that friendship. Another thing that extends with that is you don't even have to know the person. Once you find out they're a veteran, exactly. instantly there's a bond there. True. And so uh, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Thank well, you. Well, I forgot to ask, what was your job in the Army and oh, the Air Force? Well, I, in the Air Force, I was Flight Operations Resource uh, Management. Um, in the Army, I was actually... Uh, in telecommunications, as well as logistics for supply. No kidding. Any fun bases? I mean, uh, in 20 years, you had to have gone some interesting um, places. I think uh, probably the most interesting place was uh, temporary duty in Egypt, um, in Cairo, for a month, oh, in wow. uh, operation of, uh, for operations of a, a joint uh, for American Army as, as well as the um, Egyptian Army. 
And, you know, we were able to see the Sphinx. We were mm -hmm. able to visit the pyramids and to actually go to the Cairo Museum. In my 20 plus years of military uh, affiliation, I'd actually been to 23 locations outside of the continental United States of America. So, you know, again, the experiences that I've had in, in a short amount of time, 20 years goes by very quickly. It does. And um, again, like you said, um, veterans, you know, we're, we're brothers and sisters for life. Absolutely. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. And, uh, and for talking to us. I appreciate we'll be, it. We'll be back with more Vincent Voice. So I'm Will and this is my wife Babs and I grew up in Dublin and Babs and I met at the University of Georgia when we were in college. After dating a while we got married, moved off to North Carolina for seminary and then uh, towards the end of seminary we got a call uh, from First Baptist and there was opening for a youth ministry position. We had found a house before we moved down to Dublin. The day we were supposed to move to Dublin we found out that that house wasn't going to work out. So we called up Susan and the team and just asked, where do we begin? Where do we start? You know, what do we need to do to make this move forward? They were very patient with us in trying to find, with our new salaries, a house and working with us to get those numbers um, correct so that we could purchase the house that we're in now. So they helped us not only once, but twice through the whole process. So. We had questions and we didn't know really who to ask and so we really just directed all of them to Morris Bank and we would ask Susan or we would speak with one of her teammates and whether it was something that they were supposed to know or answer, they usually always helped or would find the answer for us. And so it really just made the process you know, very easy and, and reassured us that they knew what they were doing even though we had no idea what we were doing and that it was just a, a, a very smooth process. walking through the door the first time, just imagining that our family was gonna get started there. It was just a really exciting time to, to think about all the possibilities because of a home and that we could share that with friends and family. Hello again, I'm Scott Whittington with the Vincent Voice and we're still talking to veterans about Memorial Day, which is coming up this Monday. And today we're here with Kevin Daig. Yes, sir. Uh, and we're here to talk about Memorial Day and what it means to you. But first, what branch of service were you in? I served in the United States Navy. Navy? Oh, okay. 96 through 2000. 96 to 2000. Yes, sir. And what was your job there in the Navy? I was an engine man. So yeah. I worked on pretty much everything on the ship. You kept it driving? Yes, sir. All kept right. everything working, emergency diesels. So I wanted to work in the air, airfield, but I couldn't. Because yeah. I'm red, green, colorblind, so. Oh, very well. I chose the next best thing. <laughs> and, right. uh, and how was the noise in that engine room? Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> I can imagine. Really terrible. I've got some slight hearing loss, but yeah. it's manageable. What ship were you on? USS Nashville. USS Nashville. And actually, the USS Nashville's been decommissioned, and the new LPD class, the sister, the mother ship, I guess you could say, was built from the World Trade Centers, and it's the USS New York. Oh, no kidding. All right. And we're okay uh, on the Nashville. We got to come back to that probably, but on the, on the Nashville, where uh, what ports did you visit? Visited Spain, oh, Israel, yeah. Turkey. Uh, went to Bahamas once, Puerto Rico, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Uh, Spain. So I, I I went to Spain as well. Got to say that was my favorite port. By far. Yeah, yeah. The best port uh, we went to. It was. I was uh, in uh, Sevilla, and uh, I didn't make it over to Rota, but. Um, oh, we went to Malaga. Malaga. Okay. Right by the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, I know. So, okay. Yeah, Very really well. Cool. Yeah, Spain was a cool place. So yeah, it was. Multiple countries is, is the point uh, that we get to travel to. Okay, with, with Memorial Day coming up, what does that day mean to you as a veteran? Well, it's, uh, it's brotherhood. You know, girls, guys, everybody. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to serve for your country. And I'm, an, I'm honored. And mm. I would still to this day do anything I had to for this country or for anybody in it. Oh, yeah. And proudly serve again if I could. But uh, everybody that went before us, it's probably we're a free country. Absolutely. They fought hard and they died for it. And I'm honored to serve where they went. Oh, if the call came right now, my hand would be in the Definitely. air. Definitely. I'm sure every Without veteran we know would be in the air. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm sure when you were coming up, you were 
all about joining the military from day one and the starting high school. Right, you're ready to yeah. do it. I wanted to do something. Nobody <laughs> in my family, well, my dad did, but he was, uh, he was in the Army back in 1940s. So okay. uh, I thought about college, and I decided I wanted to join the military, so I went in the Navy. Very well. And so, all right, you sought, you sought them out and, uh, and joined up, and you did the engine. Engine man. Um, served in Norfolk, Virginia. In Norfolk. I, that's where I went to school. Cool. All that's right. That's a nice place. Yeah, it is. It can be. Yes. Ocean view. There's lots of stuff yeah, to do out there. Yeah, definitely a lot up there. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, let's see how many countries do you think you got? Because we were named a few. I of visited, them. I think, eight. During my service, we, uh, during my tour, we went over there and we had to cut it short because of the Kosovo incident. So sure. We pretty much set the last two months of my cruise off the coast of Kosovo. And uh, so I missed another three or four countries then. <laughs> but still eight and four eight, years. That eight, ain't too that bad. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, not, yeah. It was nice. So it was so, definitely an adventure for you. Yeah, it was. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you here Sunday at 2 for our Memorial Day service. Yes, sir. I'd love All to. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome back to the Vincent Voice. I am Scott Whittington, still talking to veterans about Memorial Day, which is coming up this Monday. And I'm here with Anthony Howard. Anthony, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you, sir. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, what, uh, what branch of service were you in? I served in the Army. In the Army? Yes, All sir. Right. And what was your job? I was a, te uh, well, I was a 36K team, which is Tactical Wire Operations Specialist, Combo. Oh, very well. And how many years did you do? I do two years. Two years, yes, very sir. well. What, would, uh, what time frame was that? 79 to 81. 79 to 81. All right, so that was, it's been a minute. Quite a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it has. All right. And uh, what, would you, what did you like most about that time, do you think? During the time I was going like TDY everywhere, I went to Alaska, I went to Panama and got my jungle patch, and I had the opportunity to go to Korea to uh, look at the DMZ. Yeah. Oh, very well. And that's a pretty hot topic right now in the news. So. Very hot. <laughs> very yeah. watching it, too, because it's crazy over there. It's yeah. crazy. I'm sure it was, I'm, and, and that many times, you know, it's still going on. Yes. So that's good to go. Um, and so with, uh, we've been talking to veterans today about what Memorial Day means to them. And so I'll extend that question to you. What, what does Memorial Day mean to you as a veteran? As a veteran, I think Memorial Day is a gathering of brothers and sisters to honor those who have paid the road for us, one that gave their lives up so that we might have better freedom inside this country in the United States. I honor those guys. And I, that's why I drive for DAV, so I can help some of the guys to get to and fro from their appointments. Yes, yeah, so you're, yeah, you're one of our uh, people here that, well, you're at the DAV, and you yes, drive sir. the veterans to their appointments. Now, I heard that we need drivers. We do. We need some more drivers. We do. Uh, it's really strenuous on me because I, I, I have two jobs, and sometimes I take off my job just to help a veteran. So it, it, we extend a hand to some of the guys to come help us out a little bit. Oh, very well. And now, yeah. so if someone was interested out in the community watching about being a DAV driver, what do they? Need? Do you know who they need to contact or talk? Yes, to? they would probably come down and talk to Miss Susan at uh, Volunteer Services. Down okay. And is she'll that Hayward? Get, Susan Hayward. Susan Hayward. Yes. Susan Hayward. Okay. And she'll get your application. Then you have to go through, a, you know, the formality, drug screen, testing, earring. You know, make sure everything's okay before you put you behind the vehicle. Sure. Make sure, sure. you're in top form. Okay, and so the DAG, the DAV drivers, they drive veterans to their appointments that aren't always necessarily here at Dublin, but they'll take them to yes, I have the a, clinics. And that's true. Uh, I, I have a one tomorrow. It's a lady on Bellevue, but then next week I go to Augusta. I took a young man to Augusta there for his appointment, wait him for the finish, and then bring him back safely. Okay, so now you you served and you're helping veterans. What does that mean to you to help them? It, I, I went and got a guy, I think a couple of weeks ago, and he told me this, he said, man, I love you. And that just makes it more worth it. Mm. You know, because I take time of my day to go help them. I'm not looking for nothing in return. This is something I give back to them that we gave to me. Yeah, because that, that's, I mean, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. those, those guys, like we've been saying before with the other veterans, mm -hmm. those that came before us set what we have today. Yeah. So if there's anything we can do to give back, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it myself. So I, I appreciate you doing that, and I appreciate, I appreciate your service because your service allowed my service. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and so I appreciate you for coming out today and Thank talking to us. So we'll be back with more Vincent Voice to discuss. We're going to talk about some mental health uh, a month that's coming up, or is this month, and, uh, and we'll talk about some things that are going to be happening here. Thank you. Shred Cycle would like to congratulate all our graduates from East Lawrence, West Lawrence, Trinity, and Dublin High Schools. Congratulations to the class of 2018 from Shred Cycle. Hi, I'm Helen Powell. I am the instructor at Careers in Cosmetology. We would love to 
congratulate all the students and graduates of 2018. If you're looking for an exciting career, please come and see us. Hi, I'm Steve. I've been enrolled here at Careers in Cosmetology for eight weeks after deciding I needed to make a career change from the construction business. I can see all the opportunities and benefits. Great business to be in. You should come down and see Miss Helen. Give it a try. Hey, I'm Ashley. I'm approaching graduation here at Careers in Cosmetology. I've learned all sorts of things. I've learned perms, coloring, waxing, manicures, pedicures, things I didn't think I could do. You also can have a great career and learn those wonderful things if you come see Miss Helen Powell at Careers in Cosmetology. Hello, my name is Shanitra. I'm currently enrolled in Careers in Cosmetology where Miss Helen Powell is the instructor. Within five weeks, I've learned so much more than what I thought I've known before. Whenever you're ready for that career change, please come see Miss Helen Powell and she sure can help you out with it. Welcome back to the Vincent Voice. I'm Scott Whittington and May is Mental Health Month. And so we're here with Diane Webb, Suicide Prevention, mm -hmm. all right, uh, here at Coral Vincent, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. But first, why, why is mental health so important? Mental health is important because it affects every aspect of our life, physically, mentally, um, socially, work, play, family. Um, your mental health is affected by everything and affects everything else in return. So it's all connected. It is. It's all connected. Well, what can someone do to help? During Mental Health Month, mm -hmm. um, talk about it. Talk about mental health openly. Share, share your own personal experience, the ups and the downs. Um, attend events when you have an opportunity. And learn as much as you can about mental health in America and, and how it affects us as a country. Now, you mentioned events. We, we have some events coming up. Uh, here at the Call Vincent? There, well, there are some events that we're participating in. Um, we have a town hall event that's on um, May the 31st at 10 o'clock in our auditorium. It's going to be an um, outreach type event to educate um, those who attend on the services and the, the various programs that we have at the VA. Yeah, so here at the hospital, all the services are going to be represented in this town hall on May 31st. So please, at 10 a.m., uh, come out if you have any questions or concerns or you want to learn more about the hospital, uh, and you can come out and, and meet those service lines. Uh, what else is going on over there? We, ha we have an excellent group in our community, Lawrence County um, Suicide Prevention Coalition. It's made up of a lot of different um, stakeholders within our community. It meets the second Tuesday of every month at 1130 at the Community Mental Health Center, Building 5. And we want to encourage anyone who's interested in suicide prevention for our county and our area to, um, to attend that if, if they are able to. And that um, meets every month. A lot of the events that you see throughout the year are actually coordinated by the Voices of Hope group. For example, on June the 1st, there's a behavioral health symposium that's going to be held at the First Baptist Church uh, from 8.30 to around 2.15. And um, anyone who attends that will be able to, to get some information about a lot of the different programs and services within our community. Okay. And uh, also, you mentioned something about support groups. Uh, and that's that, I'm sure that's for the, the veterans in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, and so let's say there's veterans out there that are watching, they're considering you know, having their mental health examined or, or looked at or just to talk to someone. What do they need to do? Okay, um, well, we do have a suicide prevention um, or a support group that meets every week at 10 o'clock here at the VA in the uh, mental health department. That is an open group. You don't have to even be registered or even eligible for VA services if you're a veteran and you want to attend that support group. It's drop in, come as you are. There's no sign up, um, no credit, you know, no sort of um, requirements. You just attend, and that's open group every week, 10 o'clock. And the only, the only, that's a Thursday. Every Thursday at 10 o'clock, and um, we, the only time we don't meet is Thanksgiving Day. And um, so okay. that's a good way just to kind of come and, and see what the, what the place looks like, um, you know, have a chance to look around, and then the leader of that group could give you more information if you wanted to um, pursue more, more services. Another way to access services is just to call and request an appointment. Um, you can call the main number, which is 272-1210, and ask for um, a mental health appointment, and you'll be directed to the right person. There's walk-in, if, if you need to come in as a walk-in, um, 
all of our VA clinics do have walk-in availability. Um, come early and be prepared to wait until the, there's an opening, but there are openings every day for walk-ins. Very well. And, and so what do you think are the barriers or the reasons that veterans in the community don't want to come in for mental health? Are there barriers that they can overcome, or do you have any suggestions on how they can overcome those barriers and, and come on in? Stigma is still a real problem. People do... Um, don't understand mental health, they don't understand mental illness and that it's a part of most, um, most people do experience some sort of mental, mental health um, problem at least once in their life. Maybe it's short term as a reaction to, to circumstances, but it's something that's not unusual for us to experience, but we still have a negative attitude about mental health and mental health services in our country. Our community is um, you know, making efforts to 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 um, diminish that stigma, but just finding out about it and talking openly about it will go a long way to reduce those barriers. Um, and some people don't realize what services are available um, in the community. It, whether you're a veteran or a civilian, there's there are community mental health services available everywhere in Georgia. Very well, and so there, there's nothing wrong with coming in and at least talking and finding out what's available. Not at all. There, there are many people that um, you come in contact with every day that have, have been through mental health treatment. Everyone doesn't talk about it and share, but you'd be you would be um, amazed at the people that are that are in, you're encountering on a day to day basis that have, you know, received mental health treatment at some point in their life. Well, and we met a, we met a few. Uh, that I've been here for four months, and I've met a few, and they've always talked about uh, the care they get here and, and the quality of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they try to suggest it out to, to the friends out in the community. Uh, and so if you're out there and you want to come in and talk to somebody, please take advantage of that service. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate your time. And, okay. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to? Well, we do have a um, peer specialist program, and um, mm -hmm. the great thing about peer specialists is these are individuals who have been through a mental illness and have achieved um, recovery through through the treatment, and they conduct groups also peer, um, throughout our entire service area, um, support groups for, for veterans. So that's another thing that may encourage people to come when the group is going to be led by someone who's experienced mental illness themselves. Well, Diane, I appreciate you. Thank you for giving us our, your time today. And Thank you. It was lovely to talk to you. Uh, I am Scott Whittington, and this has been the Vincent Voice. Thank you for uh, watching, and I will hope to see you on May 31st at that town hall at 10 a.m.